We are here at Mobile World Congress 2019 and I'm joined by Monica Zetson. Monica is the Head of Communication Services at Ericsson Digital Services. Monica, great to see you. Great to see you, this. Thank you so much for joining me. Great to be here. Now firstly, congratulations on an amazing show. Uh, huge turnout and yeah. a lot of great feedback on the demos and things you have. Yeah. Um, great to see you in person and I really had a great time with you on the podcast yes, uh, the, recently nice and some great feedback on that. Can't wait to have you back on the show. Thank you. Uh, just very briefly, uh, I've had a lot of fun on your demos and particularly the connected ambulance and some of the smart uh, mirror and magic whatever. Um, just give us a quick summary on the things you've got on the floor that have gotten some great feedback and mm -hmm. some of the more exciting things just briefly. Sure. Uh, since I am then representing communication services, it's an area of our portfolio where it, 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 it lends us very well, very well for these kind of shows. Yes. Because it's all about demonstrating, I would say, the use cases. Right. Uh, so we have divided in, in two places. Uh, the ambulance is one, but the area, we have another area where we have eight very concrete kind of use cases, okay. uh, which are more here and now, things that are not, you know, too far out, but yeah. some things that you can actually, you know, if customers are interested, this is something they could rather easily build upon what they already have and learn from the market. Fantastic. Uh, well, the big thing with that is that they, um, they can essentially create more a return on investment on their original infrastructure, right? If they've already yeah, got, I exactly. mean, whether it's uh, homes, buildings, businesses elsewhere, and uh, the connected ambulance, mm. adding that value means they can get more revenue from an existing environment without rebuilding. Because I think that's the biggest challenge in telco is that yeah. we feel like, you know, three to four G, we had to rebuild new infrastructure. Five G seems that we can add on top of that and then naturally progress. Mm. Now, you've had some fun things in there. You talked about a smart mirror and it yeah. goes away through the, the, the smart ambulance. Uh, what's the general feedback to some of the demos you've had on the floor? Yeah, it, I think it's just generally, I think there's a, a extremely positive. I think yep. the energy on the floor this year is fantastic. Good. Uh, it's always crowded. I have, my, my, my guys are like sweating <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, which is all good. Uh, I in think, a good way. Yeah, in a very good way. Uh, and then, But then particularly, I think this, when we demonstrate the here and now, yep. uh, a lot of interest around smart speakers. Anyway, okay. I would say smart in general. You talked yeah. about the mirror, right? Uh, and there, of course, so just for, for those who haven't yeah. seen, right, it's more uh, what we do, we enable another interface for communication. So in this case, it's a mirror. You okay. can see that you have in your bathroom, uh, you know, or in your hallway, maybe more likely. Uh, and through that, you can take the call, you can, uh, you can, you know, receive your messages yeah. or read your messages. It's just like adding communication to all of these, you know, use cases right. that you otherwise would have. So that, in general, I think last year we started to see more of the interest around the smart speaker. Okay. Uh, and then not necessarily only the fact that you can actually make make a phone call, but also just you know through general APIs that we have, mm -hmm. you know, start seeing the possibility to do more things, more a little bit more advanced things like right. set up a conference call, you know, or call several people at the same time, yeah. check the balance that you would have on your yep. account. You know, other things that are relevant from a carrier perspective and how that. you leverage these things, right? Excellent. And I think I, I overheard someone saying that uh, there's like context intelligence coming to these things as well, is that I don't have to have my own speaker and you don't have your own speaker. We could potentially get to the point where the intelligence in the cloud potentially yeah. says the speaker's there, it has all this ability, different uh, apps and things are on it. You could potentially walk in and ask it to make a call to somewhere, maybe your dad, and yeah. it knows it's your dad. Uh, somebody else in the family can say, call dad, and it's their dad, or whatever, or you know, yeah. whatever the case may be. I think that's an interesting uh, transition as well. Where's that, uh, where's that heading? Yeah, no, I see. That it's, a very good, uh, it's a very good example, actually, because these are one of the things, because if you think from opportunities, yeah. and from uh, most carriers, uh, what you see really is that, in many cases, you have somewhat lost the home. Right. Because, you know, in the, in the, in the tele I mean, in a communication yeah, yeah. perspective, I mean, you still, of course, would have the broadband access. So the landline's gone, landline's people are getting smartphones. Gone. I mean, it is coming this way. Yeah. I think you can't say anything else, right? Because it's been replaced by, by the, uh, the personal mobile. Yeah. However, in many cases, there's still a relevance to have the communication piece in the house. Right. And that's where we see some of these smart devices. It doesn't need to be a smart speaker. It could be as the mirror. Yeah. Or, or any other kind of you know device that smart has this TV, enabled. smart yeah. fridge, anything. I think definitely on the yeah. smart TV with a video communication. Yeah. But using this more as a, a hub for right. the for the home, where you also trigger communication, and then with the intelligence we have now, we can actually distinguish: is this Monica talking into this, yep. right, or is it my son? In that way, you know, gotcha. directing it to the right person. The only thing that we need to get right, and where we're working with the, the device side is of course that it needs to be a very good user experience in the sense that if somebody is calling for somebody who's actually not in the house yeah it shouldn't ring 
Right. You know, you should have a proximity kind of a, gotcha. you know part yeah. to it as well. So I can't yell out from the front gate, call down. <laughs> that would no. be that interesting. So you know, <laughs> so I think in general, you want. I mean, you need to balance yeah. the, the capability with uh, the user. I mean, the user friendliness of how this will actually be perceived. But wow, I mean, tons of things coming. Here. I like it. So. Does that mean we're moving towards a, a, a future where everything's connected? I mean, I, it seems to me, I mean, you know, when you talk about the mirrors, you talk about smart speakers, and I'd like to get into the ambulance at the moment, but yeah. we'll come back to that. Are we heading towards a connected everything future? Is that where we're going? Yeah, I think so. I truly think so. And I think okay. if, I, if I just compare to, uh, and not only connected, but also uh, like from a communication perspective, yeah. uh, one thing that's kind of for me is evident. I mean, previous years I spent all, almost you know 90% of my time just meeting customers. Right. But uh, given that I represent the core, uh, and if we're going to make this happen, there's so much dependency to yeah. also you know the device side, or device or interface side. I spend now more and more time well, also with other partners in the ecosystem to discuss how can we create this because I do see that right. everybody sees it. Yeah. And now, of course, you need to tie all of these pieces together to make it happen. And so I'm, I'm confident and I hear this about, you know, about the, um, the connected fire alarm and you can talk, right. well, I don't know why you would want to call through your fire alarm, but you know, all of yeah, these yeah. things with the, with the spread of the voice interface, that's going to be possible. Well, voice has always been the killer app for the telco and carrier market. I guess now yeah. it's moving from the sort of the fixed line to other devices, other anchor points. Um, well, with voice and 5G, I mean, there's an interesting transition. I, mean, I think we were talking before, and you mentioned that a lot of carriers are sort of coming back and going, oh, voice, what are we doing with voice and 5G? It's like an afterthought, because yeah. mobile broadband, critical IT, massive IT. Yeah. Um, what is that whole journey for voice and, and, and 5G like? Where does Volte fit into this conversation? What are the natural steps yep. towards voice and 5G? No, it, it is a very, uh, it is a question that we're being asked more and more. Uh, uh, and I would say the, maybe the first important thing to distinguish, just to say, is that I mean, really, voice of LT and IMS is the core right. even for voice and 5G, right? Yeah. Uh, then there are different, I would call it migration steps, or depending on when you enter, yep. different steps of how you actually support voice and 5G. Right. Uh, and so that, from our perspective, we see like first, uh, we, we think that the way it's going to come to market for many carriers is through dual connectivity, right, which okay. basically means that you have a terminal that supports do two radio, right. two radio. So basically, you would have uh, in your voice will always be voltic. You will never take your voice over right, to five G. Right. So basically, you keep that volt session, yep. and then you only use NR as a data boost. Right. So for the other type of applications, that's how you do it. The drawback is, of course, with the, with the dual radio in, in supported yep. in the terminal, battery life, even right. coverage, uh, will be limiting. So okay. it's, we don't foresee that this is a sustainable solution right. long, long term. So it's an evolutionary step. It's an evolutionary step, right? And and then as a second piece here, we, we will have, similar to what we had when you introduced Volta, here we talk about EPS, fall, uh, EPS right. fallback. So basically, you fall back to the old packet system. So basically you go, right. you are on 5G, but if you get a voice call, you fall back to 4G. Okay. Both radio and, and, and um, packet core wise. And this is, so, I guess, where 5G is enabling new use cases, even just like that, where you're integrating voice and data and other services on the same platform in an open yeah. environment, software defined things. Yes, um, and I think also here, I mean, you have then the benefit you have, you know, you support one radio at a time, you have, you know, it's more of a, it's an interlinked experience, yeah. but you still rely on your 4G coverage. And the reason would be then that you actually, in most cases, until you have a coverage situation yeah. on 5G, which is sufficient to truly support voice with a right. good quality, most likely this will take some time, so this yeah, EPS fallback will be more reasonable. Yeah. Uh, but then we have then, when you actually go full voice over 5G or voice over NR, uh, and here is the situation where you basically fully rely on N on NR also yeah. for your voice communication. Uh, the, here, then you will also see, I mean, so like emergency call handling, everything right. else will yeah. then actually be done over NR. Uh, what we do see though is, I mean, you really do need to have the, the relevant coverage in place before mm -hmm. you go here, right. not to end up in a situation because in this situation, what you will do, you will have more of a seamless handover between 5G and 4G. Right. Uh, however, if your 5G coverage is too poor for voice, you will go back and forth, back and right. forth, and which ideal. for your KPIs, uh, yeah, yeah. job calls, etc. This yeah. is not the situation you want to be in. 
So I think from that perspective, definitely, you know, you want to be make sure that your network is there. And then, of course, all the device supports need to follow along with all of this. But just okay. in general, I think we see that this is you know, a very reasonable evolutionary part. Yeah. Uh, and then it's going to be more of a spectrum situation on when is actually this voice or NR uh, okay. you know, in the right place. One of the things I'd like to come back to is uh, I left the connected ambulance to, yeah. to last because I, I, I have a real soft spot for that. Um, and not because I think I'm going to die tomorrow, but I just I think when, when we look at the use cases, uh, health and healthcare, aged care, hospitals, mm -hmm. ambulances, uh, these sort of first responder spaces, uh, I, I see them as a natural place to be kind of you know the, the emerging space for these technologies because as we were talking before, like when this thing's careering down the road, it's going to do handoffs from cell to cell. It's going to different you know sort of potentially three, four, five G eventually. Um, you can put intelligence uh, in the cloud that moves with this. You could make uh, voice calls and then video and data calls where someone could be scanning. We had the demo here, which I, I saw yeah. yesterday, which is fantastic. Uh, you had a nurse sort of pretending to scan somebody. Uh, maybe I had internal bleeding. They discovered it. Um, and then that was shipped over the network. And then a specialist at the hospital looked at it, made a call. And I think you made the comment before where like, even if, if the hospital didn't have a bed or didn't have the right skill set yeah. or they could read rec, this, this is mind-boggling, yeah. but it's it's here today. And this, I think, it was a partnership we've done with uh, BT and the uh, uh, London College. I think, yeah, is King's it? College. King's College at yeah. London. Sorry. Yes. Uh, and and you've got it live here. Yeah. Then I think I should say this one is maybe a little bit for you know further away before sure. it's truly out there. Uh, and and I, I also want to add, they're not pretending to scan; they are actually scanning. Well, that's what I saw. Yeah. I saw the image move. I was like, "Wait a minute! This yeah. is not a can no. demo. You, like, yeah, it yeah, was real." My, they do the hand though, because they the don't want to sit, come up in a situation when they discover something, you know, uncomfortable. Right, there. right. Uh, but but for me, yeah, I, and I think this is a great example because my, when we look at this with, with what we could do with Volti and IMS, right? We talk a lot about we have voice, we have messaging, we have video. Uh, but the, the system as such is capable of so much more. And that's what we want to you know, enable yeah. now with 5G. And we really call it, you know, we're going from real-time communication to real-time interaction. Oh, I like that. So, kind Can of I have that on a t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, real-time sure. communication to real-time interaction. Yes. So what, we're doing, wow. so what we're doing here under the hood is like, yes, you have the IMS. You, the doctor in this case and the nurse will establish a session yeah. using first with video and with voice. Uh, making sure you know authentication is there, security is there, wow. quality is there. But then the nurse can then decide, okay, we need to do this ultrasound. Yeah. And here we establish what we call a, a data channel. Okay. So it's also leveraging the same capability, but it's a much more generic channel that could be used for various kinds of services. In this example, it's an ultrasound. Yep. Right? Uh, and through that, I mean, we see that in, in this case, that this fits perfectly because there's such yeah. conditions that we're going to do. But some other interesting use cases that we have, you know, in yeah, mind yeah. that leverage the same capability. Uh, one that I like most personally, that I think I would use, is yeah. more on the consumer side. Okay. Another thing, what you could do in this case, basically, you have your phone. You bought something that's not working perfectly. Right. Uh, uh, could be anything. Could be your, you know, washing machine is not sure. working. Addition. Uh, call customer support. Uh, and they try to explain to you, right? Oh, uh, you're going to do this, is yeah. this lamp blinking not, blah, blah, Push blah. Push the green button. Yeah. There's five green buttons. <laughs> so, yeah, or, or, or at least three red, yeah? <laughs> and then instead, so what you do here natively in the dialer is our thinking. You just, you know, turn this into a session. Oh, you okay. can open this data channel. Yeah. I start filming. They use AR, VR to impose uh, what, Monica, is it that I you're going to do? It. So they, they've I shown me, it. they point to me, this is the one that you're going to do. So here, Brilliant. you could argue, and here, you know, you're basically using a WebRTC data channel for yeah. this. Uh, you could argue that some of these things, all you can do today on a browser, yes, you could, if you take a voice call and then yeah, you yeah. open this session and you do this. It's a nightmare. But here, it's all integrated. So I think we cannot forget mm. about the user experience. So I think that's I like how that. we see these coming together. So that's the use case I want. Really? That's like gamification of the entire platform, if you pardon the pun, which yeah. I think Pokemon woke us all up to, right? Yeah, exactly. I think I lost yeah. four kilos when Pokemon came yeah. out chasing them around <laughs> the city in Sydney. Yeah. One thing underpinning all this, though, is um, you know, there's an existing market in the whole enterprise space and business messaging, right? When you talk yeah. about all these exciting things, um, tell me what's happening in this whole ecosystem of the value chain and business messaging. Yeah. Where is this going? Because I, you know, I think sometimes I think it becomes the poor cousin. This is another area where I think we have seen, you know, stepping up in level of interest. Yep. How we approach it here is because we believe in order for business messaging to happen, there's so many different parties that has to be engaged in the value chain, and that right. that's kind of the point we're making here. Right. Uh, 
starting with who has the need. Okay. In this case, you know, we have uh, Visilab who has basically selling uh, sunglasses and selling, you know, medical glasses or yeah, yeah, normal. <laughs> Normal uh, reading glasses? Normal reading glasses and normal glasses to their uh, customers. They need to digitalize. Right. Like any other company right. needs to go digital in their interaction with their customers. Yeah. Uh, and what we've done there, the brand, together with an aggregator, in this case yeah. it's Cinch, yeah. uh, together with our partner for messaging, WIT Software, together with our customer Swisscom, wow. and Ericsson for the infrastructure yeah. on the IMS. Uh, what they can do in this case, basically, they take the interaction with their customers to another level. So rather than just, you know, communicate through sending an SMS, you know, you have an appointment, or whatever, uh, you here get some a much richer opportunity. You have, okay, we know you're going to come visit us. Yep. Uh, you want to take a look ahead of the appointment. Well, here like are that. some things to try out. Here's our new sunglasses. You click. AR starts. Oh, we scan like your it. face. Glasses on. Hmm. You know, you turn, yeah, I like them, right? Order in store, yes, what's your location? Really? It's here, nearest store, okay, we have them for you. This is, how, I mean, you can wow. pay. So if you if you think about the, the guys here at actually, you know, yeah. the enterprise in this case, going to this level of interaction with your customer versus just having, you know, yeah. a, a web page or you know, being more anonymous or even being more analog. So here, I think there's a real opportunity. It, it does require that everybody, you know, do their piece. But everybody I talk to are it's like, yes, we're going to do this. And then it's just a matter of what role do you want to play in this. Yeah. I mean, gosh, the use cases are mind-boggling. I could spend yeah. all day just talking about that. Yeah. Well, last quick question for you. Um, Mobile World Congress is really exciting. There's a lot of flashing lights. You've got some amazing demos yeah. and flashing lights in the ambulance sense in your case. Yeah. Uh, what comes after the show? I mean, to me, yeah. it seems like that's when the real work starts. I mean, all the magic happens with the demos here, and we get excited. Yeah. The people then have a million questions. They want to know how to kind of reach out and have a conversation with you to look at what's next. In your part of the world, what's your view of what the next 12 to 18 months looks like? Where are we going with this after the event? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, I think actually all everything from my perspective that we're demoing here, we are moving forward with. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, uh, it's really taking it uh, with some of our lead customers uh, to bring it to market, uh, right. to actually launch uh, okay. on, on these services, particularly on the smart side. I think we will see a lot of things happening in the nearest 12 months. Uh, and then also in addition, uh, I think we're, what we're doing here uh, on the business messaging, I mm -hmm. see also this will happen within the nearest 12 months. Okay, uh, that's exciting. I think exciting. then the ambulance uh, and this data channel use case, this is something we for sure now we have through more of, maybe not so much on the carrier side, but rather the partners we will be dependent right, on, right. on the end points, etc. That's a conversation that's now, I mean, I look forward to, you know, taking to the next phase and engage also with the customers for feedback. Wow. So I think this is, as always, you know, it's a great uh, energy boost for us. And now mm -hmm. it's a matter of, you know, following up with our customers. So I think, yeah, it will be intense. That's what it's I think. It's going to be very busy indeed. <laughs> but that's great news. Well, yeah. congratulations on a great show. Thank you. Fantastic to see you again. And uh, Monica, I've just loved listening to all these insights you've been giving us. And thank you very much for making so much time available to us. I can't wait to see where you're going the next 12 to 18 months with these. And I'll be watching very closely with great interest. Yeah, thank you so much. It was great to be here. It was great to get to share all of this. Thank you, you so know. much. Thank you. Bye-bye.